Okay, welcome everybody. Sorry for a little few seconds of nothingness. Um, I've just managed to get everything set up and uh, I think we're ready to start. Let me check. Yeah, it looks like you've got the whole board on there, more or less. Okay, so we'll start with chapter 51. If anyone's uncertain what I mean by chapter 51, I'm talking about the Advanced Phrasal Verbs book from Cambridge University Press by Michael McCarthy and Felicity O'Dell. It's an excellent book and it's what I'm using with a lot of students at the moment to practice phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are very important because they're so common. Um, I think a lot of students try to use exotic and interesting words that they take from literature. And the problem with doing this is that a lot of literature is more than 100 years old. And when you actually check how often in, uh, native speakers use some of these literary words, it can be very, very rare. Whereas these phrasal verbs, I guarantee that you will hear these in almost every film or TV show that you ever watch. You will hear people using them, they're very common. And that's what makes them so useful. I mean, really, you want to use language that everybody's using in England at the moment on the streets and in America and in Australia. Um, you don't want to use words which appeared once in an Edgar Allan Poe poem 250 years ago, or however long, probably 200 or even less, 150 years ago. Um, it may sound good uh, to some people, but a lot of people won't understand you. Whereas these, everyone will understand you. So if you sound someone out, you try to get their opinion about something. Um, so it's when you have a new idea and you want to see what people think about your idea. So you sound them out to find out if they think it's a good idea or not. It's when you want someone's opinion on your plan or your idea, something like that. Okay, if you confide in someone, that means you choose that person as your confidant. Yeah, you choose that person and they will be, they're a trustworthy person, the kind of person you can speak to about your problems. And so if you choose to confide in someone, you trust that person and you want to share your secrets with them. You want to let them in on your secrets. And I also put up here, turn to someone, because you turn to someone when you need advice. You maybe turn to your auntie when you need advice and then confide in her. So turn to is very similar to confide in. It's you, you turn to someone for advice, and I would even put that up there, turn to someone for advice, and, but you confide, your, you, you confide in someone, you tell them your secrets. Um, okay, to root something out. Um, this is when you want to get something from someone, or you want to find someone, but it's very, very difficult. So it's when you try to find information, which is very difficult, or when you want to find someone, which is very difficult. The word root obviously means tree root, and if anybody's ever uprooted a tree, you'll realise that it's very difficult, yeah? That would be to uproot a tree. But um, the idea is that you're getting down into the roots to find something. So you might, a journalist might have to go to a foreign country in order to root out information. Um, you could also say, if you're in the military and you know that there's a spy in your division, you need to root out the spy. And it means to get, to extract that spy. Um, so you could root information out, but you could also root people out. And the idea is that they're very difficult to find when you root them out or root the information out. Now, again, this works very well with the next three, very similar, and they do work well with journalists, same as ferret out, in fact. If you can worm some information out of somebody, or wring some information out of somebody, or drag some information out of somebody, this means to extract information. And they're all slightly different, but they're used in slightly different ways. There are different collocations here. And so you can certainly drag the truth out of someone or wring the truth out of someone. And the idea is that you apply loads of pressure to do this. Um, so it's not quite the same as root out, although similar. But um, if, you're, if the police have a suspect, they try to wring the truth out of the suspect. They try to drag the truth out of him. But you can even wring money out of someone. If you're... Um, I don't know, uh, let's think of a good example here. 
Um, maybe one of your friends owes, owes you money, and he's the kind of person who doesn't like paying back uh, money that he owes people. And so you have to try to wring the money out of him. You're calling him every single day, and eventually you manage to wring that £10 out of him. Um, worm wouldn't be used with money, and neither would drag. You wouldn't drag the money out of him or worm the... Well, you could worm the money out of him, actually, but it's a different meaning than wring. Because if you worm the money out of him, it sounds to me like you're doing something bad or something negative in order to get the money out of him. Not applying pressure, but being sneaky and crafty to worm the money out of him. And I would say that worm has that sneakiness and craftiness to it. You'll notice below that you can worm out of a duty. You could get out of a duty. Both of these two mean avoid a responsibility. So maybe you have to pick the kids up from school tomorrow, but you decide to worm out of it, to get out of it. So you call your wife and you give all sorts of, you make up all sorts of lame excuses to worm out of going and picking them up. Um, so worm, it sounds like weasel. And in fact, weasel out of something would also be possible. And the idea is that these animals, they're not considered nice animals. I mean, a little wiggly worm, we think of it as a crafty animal, and definitely weasel would be a very crafty animal. And if you weasel out of a task or duty or responsibility, it means you're using all sorts of underhand methods and crafty, dirty tactics to avoid that responsibility. Um, so yeah, they're certainly negative. And when you worm something out of someone, it sounds like you're using craftiness rather than sheer brute force, like ring someone at something out of someone. You should always remember that ring, if you ring the clothes out of water, if your jumper is wet and you ring the clothes out of water, you do that, you ring it out of water. And so there's, there's strength, there's brute force going into wringing the truth out of somebody or wringing the money out of somebody. Um, and same with drag. Drag is when you've got something heavy and so there's brute force going on. But worm is weaselly. It's more underhand techniques and craftiness. Now, if you fed it out some information, it's similar to root out for sure, root something out. But the idea is that you just ask lots and lots and lots of questions. So you work really hard with ferret, inf ferret some information out, ferret something out. And it does work like that, ferret something out. And so uh, this is quite rare, this one compared to all the others, but it means that you continually work, um, you ask, you bombard your, um, you, the person you're interviewing with questions in order to ferret out the truth. So very similar again to these other ones here, not really to this one in here, which is a void of responsibility, but um, well worth remembering for sure. And you should remember that ferret is an animal, like worm and weasel. Um, so uh, we often have these animal phrasal verbs as well. I should do another lesson on animal phrasal verbs someday. Someday I will. Okay, if you stake out a building, that means that you watch the building all night. The police stake out buildings, where, and it's when they are watching a suspect. The suspect doesn't know about it, but the police are outside with their binoculars, with their telescopes, and they're staking out the building to find out what's going on there. They obviously have the impression that something illegal is going on there, and so they need to stake out the building in order to arrest the suspects. Now, if the news gets out, or if the news leaks out, I think this chapter was all about news and media. If the news gets out or the news leaks out, the news spreads, yeah? And the idea is that the, the, there was some kind of secret which was held back. Maybe the government were holding out on the public and they were keeping something secret, but in the end, someone betrayed them and leaked out the story and the story got out and the story leaked out so that's ergative leak out you could say someone leaked out the story or the story leaked out um but you would only say the news got out you wouldn't say somebody got the story well maybe some people would the someone got the story out maybe but this one's definitely ergative okay if you whip up support um it's a bit like drum up support but I wouldn't say whip up business, and that's why I've put this one in brackets. Remember that these phrasal verbs do...